Well, it's a, it's a great morning to be able to be up here with you this morning, uh, as well as with Kristen and Jean. Uh, yesterday was a great day. During the Christmas season, we get to uh, celebrate the 111 Project's Christmas party, an annual uh, event that we get to do, and these ladies out, out here uh, are going to share a little bit about that. So, so Jean, why don't we start with you? Can you give people who maybe uh, have never heard of it an overview, maybe tell them a little bit about what happened yesterday and, and how this event kind of uh, plays out every single year? Okay. So... Um our last Grove was about how to do church, and I just want to tell you that yesterday's party was an example of how to do church perfectly, and um, the first step of doing church right is to show up, and we had this large army of volunteers show up. I think the picture's behind us, and um, each one stepped in and brought joy and happiness to these kids. Some of these kids never go to church, and this might be their only experience in church, and so... You want them to find joy and happiness in a safe place and a place that they want to come back to. And I just want to thank all of our volunteers for making it fun and, you know, the, the setup, the games, the crafts, everything was done with excellence and they just had so much fun. And I just thank all the volunteers from the setup, the donations, and the people that were there spreading joy with the kids. Jim, before you, before you pass on, can you explain a little bit the who's coming to you this Christmas oh, party? I'm sorry. So the Christmas party is for Gwinnett adoptive and foster families. Now, you're like, why adoptive? A lot of times the foster kids are then adopted, but then they're still fostering. So it's kind of a combination of, of families. And a lot of um, the families are not necessarily church families. So this may be their only experience. Some of the foster families take their kids to church, but others do not. So it's kind of a range. Awesome. Kristen, this was your first time. Yeah, this is the first time being a part right. of it. It's been going on for a couple of years now. What was your experience like? Can you share a little bit about yesterday's for you? What was like? What was like? Right. Well, the first thing that hit me was how many people were there volunteering. Like she said, it was an army, um, and so many were young. They're from Alter and uh, what do we call Sorry. it now? Serge, yeah. <laughs> um, but all the teenagers were there, and they were having so much fun. They were excited to be helping, so that was great. And the, um, the place looked so festive. They had decorated the community center with poinsettias and red and green everywhere. And then everything just moved like an organized machine. It was very well organized, all the different stations that they had for the kids to um, go through. I was at the craft table, and um, Melanie Peterson had organized that, and she had two crafts for us to do. And a really cool thing happened. Um, we had journals that the kids could decorate, and we had Christmas tree ornaments that they could make. But we didn't have as many journals as we had ornaments. And so we decided that just the middle school kids and older would do the journals. And as the afternoon progressed, we saw that there were some younger kids that wanted to make journals. And we said to Melanie, do we allow that? And she said, that's OK, just go ahead. Well, we not only had little kids, but we had some parents that wanted to make them. There were some boys, teenage boys, that wanted to make them. We, just, we didn't expect they would be interested, but they really enjoyed that. And we were sure we were going to run out. But at the end of the party, Melanie had one journal left. So that meant that everybody who wanted to make one got to make one. And we just looked at each other and said, it was just like the loaves and the fishes. So that was cool. And I'll continue that theme. So I've been doing this for about seven years, and every year I stress terribly about, are we going to have enough of everything? And this year was no different. I'm a slow learner. You think I would know. And um, so I'm just going to share a few examples of how God just provided and in abundance. And the, about a week before the party, um, my boss sent me a picture of poinsettias and said, hey, do you want these for your party? And we usually get them donated from a florist, so we really didn't need them, but something in me just said, you better take those. And so I did, and sure enough, she had forgot to order them. So God provided our centerpieces for the party. And then um, we had a company that offered us comforters and pillows and um, sheet sets, brand new for the foster family. So of course I said, yes, we'll take them, but I didn't think about the logistics of this was like a large amount. It was six pallets, and it was down in Macon, and I didn't know how I was going to get them there, where I was going to store them, and God sent Phil Cotter, who um, picked them up and delivered them the day of, and so that was a huge blessing. And one other thing was the board games. So the week of the party, the numbers jumped drastically, so I had to come up with enough board games for all the kids. 
So Saturday afternoon when Brandon and I were there, we were counting and I was seven short. So I'm thinking, oh gosh, I'm going to have to run, get seven more games. And within five minutes, a law firm called me and said, hey, I have seven games that came in from out of state. Are you still at the church and can I deliver them? So God just like blew me away. And the last thing is that group of volunteers, we were hoping that we could give an elf to each family to kind of stay with them. And we had six elves registered. Well, as you can see by that picture, a whole lot of people showed up that I didn't know about. <laughs> and so we had plenty of elves and each family was a, walked around and hosted by a, a someone. So God handled all of the details. He sent this army of angels and he just took care and you guys were just the perfect example of church done right so thank you all i know uh, jean for, for us as we hear these stories these are three stories that you shared christian's story as well but i believe that the families that came and left yesterday that their stories will continue on we'll, you'll never know them right. you'll never hear them we'll never know and hear them but we believe that god is just doing this for us where we can visibly see this that the stories are continuing on incredibly week after week in the homes of those families. So thank you for what you guys do with 111 Project. Us as a church, I, I absolutely love being able to partner with you guys uh, in the greatest sense of just us here, being able to see what you do and be able to be a part of that too. So we'd love to pray for you, pray for these families that were impacted by what has happened yesterday. And so if you don't mind church, if you would stand with us, we're gonna continue to worship. And